It is time for homeschooled as we welcome back Moose and JJ. So Saturday night was another inconsistent performance for the Knicks. A terrific first half, but their double digit lead was gone when the third quarter ended. JJ, just how frustrating is it to watch this team on a nightly basis? Same old, same old, Michelle. They're as good as it gets for a quarter and a half. They had a terrible close to the end of the second quarter. And how many times have we seen the New York Knickerbockers start off third quarters in this monumental funk. All of a sudden, you look, a 20-point lead is gone. There was a point where it looked like the Lakers were going to win by double digits, but then to make matters worse, they get a game-tying R.J. Barrett three. You get overtime, you think, all right, maybe somehow, some way, this team is going to win, and they play as bad an overtime period as you can see. And, Moose, I don't know about you, I can't watch Evan Fournier anymore because if he doesn't hit a three, he's absolutely useless. But yeah, it's kind of same old, same old, Michelle. Paul for the course for the Knickerbockers this year. Yeah, I mean, even with the surprising return of LeBron James, who ended up having a triple-double, missed the five previous games, you know, and and taking on his brilliance. But you have a 21-point lead. Yeah, as you mentioned, as you were running through the highlights, Michelle, you jump out, you score the first 11 points of the game. Things are cooking. Barrett drops in 36. Randall resurgent. Even with all the trade rumors, he gives you 32 and you still end up losing. And as John mentioned, the starts of the third quarter, we all understand the NBA comes down to the second half, regardless of what happens in the first half. And it's not like this is a quintessential Laker team. The return of LeBron James certainly helps, but this is really par for the course of what we've watched from this team all season long, whether it be bad fundamental play defense. I agree with John about what his criticism of Evan Fournier. We talked about the point guard play. The positives are going to be Barrett and Randall, but unfortunately it was another gut-wrenching loss. JJ, does a game like Saturday night give you a better idea of what the Knicks should be doing at next week's trade deadline? Yeah, I think the Knicks got to play their young guys. And when it comes to veterans on this team, if there's a miracle and there's somehow, some way a taker for Julius Randle or Evan Fournier, so be it. More realistic, the idea of Kemba Walker being on this team shouldn't be the case whenever Derrick Rose comes back. The Knicks have a brutal stretch coming up. They are not going to do well on this West Coast road trip. They got the Jazz. They got the Nuggets. They got the Warriors. I see a whole lot of L's. So, yeah, I'm thinking about next year, and I'm thinking about younger players moving forward. This team is not amounting to anything this year. No shot. Yeah, not not this year. And But you've got a coach, obviously, who's looking to try and build upon the success from a year ago, and it really hasn't happened. I, I think the way that this roster was put together was flawed. The players were flawed. They were trying to get better offensively, but it didn't play to the, to the strengths of the head coach and Tom Thibodeau. So, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I don't – the Knicks aren't going anywhere this year. It's not a matter of just making it to the postseason. You're trying to build upon what happened last year. Last year was a complete and utter outlier. Now it's getting back to basics. And if you compare some veteran players off, you know, come the NBA trade deadline, which is what, three o'clock on Thursday afternoon. I think if you're the Knicks, you've got to do it.